Learning Analytics workspace, we finally have a TI debugger integrated into the tool itself. Today, we're gonna to have a quick look at how to use that debugging feature. We're gonna talk about what it does well, things to look out for, and what could still be improved. In order to enable the debugging feature, you need to be working on a process within a workbench. And when you're in here, it will look all as usual, what you're used to, but in our little ribbon we have for the process, on the right hand side, we have a new option, which is open debugger. If I click on that, it will bring up a new pane. And in that pane, there is a toggle option for debugger. So if you toggle it to on, it will show up as green and your run process button up here will change to a debug option. So if you just want to run your process, you leave this off and run it through as usual, but with it on, instead of running the process in standard mode, we will go into a debugging mode. Now, if you have any uh, parameters or anything like that, the process will still ask them as it usually would, because essentially here, you are just running a process as normal. The only difference is you have the option to go through it step by step and line by line instead of doing it all in one go. Once we've initiated the TI debugger, we notice that the debugging pane now shows three different sections. There are breakpoints, variables, and locks. Now, the variables section we'll see is already pre-populated with every variable that is on a later line of my process. So this indicates that an initial pass through has been done and it looks for all of the different variables and constants that are set throughout the process and it's already waiting to get to them. So at the moment, our line eight in the prologue is highlighted in a light blue. And we also see in the top section that it says I'm paused on prologue line eight. So that means I haven't got to these yet. I have my controls just below it here. And if I go to the step over button, that will go through the lines one by one. And I start seeing, so I'm currently on line 12. So cdim org and cube name are populated because I've already actioned those rows. I'm on line 12. So that means that I haven't yet actioned what is on this row. Everything above it has been actioned line 12 is what is about to happen. So we can see that by C dim channel currently still being empty. But if I press step over again, it gets filled in. Now, the way I'm going to work most of the time is I'm not going to want to skip or step through a process every row, every record as I go through. So I'm going to be interested in specific points. What I can do is click between the row numbers and the code section, and we see it puts a little dot there, and we also get a breakpoint added. Now, what that means is if instead of pressing step over, I can press continue, and it will run every line of code up to my breakpoint. So with something like an if statement, I could have been looking to say, okay, is the if met, or is it performing the else code? And then I can go through my step over and see that it has skipped the if section and gone straight to else. So now I know what is happening there. And what you'll also notice as I'm clicking through this is the lock section is getting a bit more information in it. And this is something I wasn't expecting the debugger to include, but it's a very, very useful feature potentially as it allows the developer to see what actions they are doing that are causing different types of locking. So it could become very useful when you are analyzing processes that conflict with each other. But if we go back to the concept of breakpoints, so before I just put a static breakpoint in, which means my process will always stop at that point. What I could do instead is if I had one on my data tab, I can put an expression in here that says only stop when certain things are met. So I have a variable the VS org and I have a org element that is 103. So if I just put that in, it would only stop on the data uh, tab line eight 
once my data source includes that variable. So if I've got uh, hundreds of other orgs that are executed first, it'll skip past those and it will only stop once the org is equal to 103. I can also go a little bit further than that and use an ampersand to specify uh, stopping on other variables also. So I only now want to stop when my org is 103 and my product is 23001. And I will add that. And we see our, um, our breakpoint symbol is now a green color instead of the sort of red brown hue that we saw before. So now if I press continue, it skips ahead to this point. And what we see is it's not actually worked. And this is something that I have been uh, noticing a little bit with these breakpoints where sometimes when I'm specifying them while I'm already in the process, it doesn't seem to actually take heed of what I have asked it. But if I cancel the process, it keeps the breakpoints as I specified them before. And this time I'm going to run it through again uh, with the same information I provided previously. And we will see what it does this time. So now if I press continue, so I'm currently on line eight, the start as I was before. So I press continue, it has stopped on line 29 because there's no expression, it should always stop there. Now this time, what we see is on the data tab, it has only stopped for the data source record that matches the expression I provided. So from the little bit of testing I've done, it seems that uh, you should be very careful adding the expression while you are in the debugging mode, and it can be good to cancel out and then run it through a second time. So just something to look out for there. But as a basic concept, that way of adding a breakpoint that will only stop when you're data source matches specific variables is going to be really useful. So imagine you're loading a uh, general ledger with uh, thousands of different journals in, and you know there's only one specific nominal code that's not behaving how you expect it to. What you can do is say, just run as normal for everything else, but stop when you get to that nominal code, and then let me step through line by line and see what you are doing, what is happening, what if statements are being executed, what variables you are defining, and it'll be a really useful way to actually understand <laughs> what's going wrong. Um, but in general, this is something, debugging is something we've been asking for for a really long time. There was briefly something that was released that wasn't actually inside the tool, so it didn't really meet the requirements. But this is doing everything that I would have wanted a debugging tool to do, and it's doing it very well. Uh, there are a few things I would like it to do in addition to that. So for example, if I do something uh, that doesn't work. Now, with this option, I'm going to hit uh, some minor errors as I go through my process. Um, so what I would like it to do is make it really obvious that I have encountered a minor error, but it's not going to do that. In fact, what I will do is stop at that point, yes. So continue up to there and now step over. So I definitely don't have an element called don't work. So I have just encountered a minor error and now I've encountered another one, but there's nothing telling me that it's gone wrong unless I enable the system variables. And then in here, I have a data minor error count that is now two. And if I run it again, it will go to three. And likewise, you would have, if it was on the metadata tab, metadata minor error count, prologue minor error count, epilogue minor error count, etc. But what I would really like, what would make this so much better, is if those specific variables had their own section uh, where they're highlighted in really bold, vibrant colors and say, something's gone wrong, you should go back and think about the line that you've just processed. 
Uh, so that's one feature that I think could uh, vastly improve this. Um, the locking section as well, like I mentioned before, it's something that I didn't think was going to be included in an initial release of the debugging tool. I think it's fantastic that it is included because I can certainly see, for example, as I went past my view create, there was a lock enabled. But I, I just think uh, there's a huge potential here to add some more uh, information and perhaps trim away some of the less important information. I haven't had a lot of time to think about exactly what I'd like in there, um, but it feels like it's a gold mine for making a developer's life so much easier because locking is something that is very challenging uh, to deal with. I think about this whole debugging tool in general, and if this had been available when I started out working as a developer, I would have been so happy. I, I dare say that I might even still have hair on my head if I'd been able to work with this instead of the old grey box that we had with Architect. Here I'm going to make a quick edit to the video, as can be seen from my very showbiz outfit change. So previously I shared some incorrect information, and thanks to Julian Solano, who is a member of the software development team over at IBM, he actually corrected me on that and has shown how to do something which I said wasn't possible. So previously I had stated that if you use an execute process command to call a child process, that you were not able to debug both of them at the same time. But here he has shown a quite simple and obvious way to do that, which I really should have picked up. But thank you, Julian, for explaining that to me. So what we need to do is if we stop on the line of the execute process itself, so here we're doing that with a breakpoint, so I will go straight up to that point via the continue button. So once I'm on that line where the execute process is, I can press step in from the commands here. And what we will see happen is it actually opens up the TI window. If I didn't already have it open, if I did have one open, it will go into there. And now I am in debugging mode in the sub process so I can continue working the same way where I can step through the lines one by one or I could add breakpoints and continue in that way. And once I continue out of this, once that is finished, it will go to the next breakpoint you have in the parent process. So I added a breakpoint a bit further down and now I can continue debugging in that parent process. So thank you very much Julian for sharing that information. Uh, but other than that, it is a really good and functional debugging tool that I think a lot of us that have been working as with development for as long as we have, chances are we're probably not going to make the most use out of this. But like I say, if I'd had this available when I was starting out 15 years ago, it would have been amazing. And what I'm really going to do is I'm going to push this on any uh, new developers that I'm training up. Uh, because it is something that will be so vastly helpful to them. Um, and it's by far, I think this is in the entire time I've been working with planning analytics or TM1, as it was called when I started working with it. This is the, by far and away, best feature that has been released for developers. Um, nothing else comes near it. So... Thank you to IBM from all the developers out there.